morning everybody first day of champions league plays in the books the first four groups groups a to through d and yeah i saw only highlights but i think i saw highlights of six games in total so have a pretty good idea the only ones uh, let's get them out of the way before, before i forget them that i didn't see was Lok uh, galatasaray against Lok moscow which was three nothing which i find quite impressive by Galatasaray and the other one was the one nothing victory of Dortmund over Club Brugge. Uh, yeah. Kendall cannot say much but this is the three points that you needed uh, to be alive in uh, very much in this group so uh, since you can get right to it Atletico Madrid won at Monaco um, that was one of the highlights uh, that I saw. Monaco got the early lead. It was a little bit a lucky lead uh, from what I could get up with. But you know, both teams are not in their best shape for sure. Uh, the goal was scrappy. Uh, I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, but yeah, they got the lead. Atletico soon equalized. And then I think from there on, I think I'm going to take a slightly longer round today. Um, and from there on, uh, it was all Atletico Madrid uh, who got the winner already just before halftime, and then Monaco couldn't muster anything. But that game was, at least to me, least interesting for the result. It was most interesting because of the jerseys. Uh, I will talk about, you will get this evening, you will get my Group A Champions League jersey review and I hope I will be able to shoot another one or two more tonight. Gotta see how it goes. Yesterday I was just too shocked to be able to do anything like that, but I at least prepared a few. But yeah, gonna, the next few days uh, in the evening you will see Champions League uh, jersey reviews. Um, I know jerseys of mine so far. Yeah, so uh, the most interesting part is I made this video about the new UEFA kit regulations and even in my Group A review that you have not seen yet, but you will see now, uh, I said that, um, you know, the front of the back needs to have the same pattern, uh, which clearly is, is stated there, but I guess they are allowing now for a transitionary period because this did not happen in that game. Uh, very clear evidence for that was that Monaco had a white back. If you see my review, the back of the Monaco jersey is the same as the front with the you know, triangular strikeout in red. And yesterday they played with an all white back, which, yeah, it looked at first okay but it's again you have this two-sidedness of the shirt that the one you see this really big red speck here and then uh, on the front the speck is <laughs> the statement but, you know, the strike out and the and everything else is white and it makes uh, sense that it was white because of the um, white sleeves and all that uh, but yeah I think exactly for for this reason those new regulations were pulled in place probably because the jerseys were already released they didn't but I on the other side then uh, Monaco plays in France with the nice back so I don't quite understand it maybe UEFA is in setting for next year or uh, yeah something weird is happening that's for sure so I uh, Maybe I have to dig deeper there. And the same thing goes for Atletico Madrid, who played in their wonderful um, third jerseys, which actually in play didn't look that bad, but uh, again, the colors have nothing to do with Atletico Madrid. I'm sorry to say. And yeah, the back was all mono-colored, uh, with just a uh, number being uh, put on there, which was in orange of all colors. Uh, I think if this was um, a red, I probably could live with it more, but having orange as an accent color, um, yeah. Uh, the commentator said the unusual 
new away jerseys by Real, uh, by Atletico Madrid. Of, there's also traffic jam here. It is. Okay, that was not a smart idea. I'm gonna go forever to work. God, God, it's gonna take forever. Too bad. Should have known better. Okay, so we got that. We have Group A out of the way, and yeah, we can also talk about. Um, I think the Schalke group uh, is Group C because I saw the other game. So we had Lok Moscow beat. Um, maybe it's in Group D. I'm not yet with the numbers on the new Champions League, uh, the letters on the new Champions League season, <laughs> clearly. I think actually that Group C is the one, uh, is uh, the Liverpool, Napoli, and then Group D is the Lok Moscow, Schalke, Porto, and Galatasaray. So Galatasaray with the big win. Uh, Schalke against Porto was kind of a little bit of a dud. Um, the early highlight was a penalty save. Uh, so, um, Porto got a penalty and uh, was saved by the goalkeeper. A really good save, I gotta say. Um, I think it was kind of even with Schalke, maybe trying to take a little bit of control, but um, not being very effective doing so. So, yeah, uh, that didn't work out well, I gotta say. Um, but they took the lead through Mbolo, who nutmegged uh, Casillas on the way, which, which was a nice counter-attacking move. But in the end, the way he pulled it in, it seemed entirely avoidable, I have to say. And then uh, Porto was gifted a penalty. There you go. So, yeah, uh, two penalties at home against you, that's, that's a special feat. I don't think you see this very often, especially on teams that are kind of level. I think the game was also interesting because uh, Porto, interesting, uh, nice fact to it. To it. Uh, Porto won the last Champions League when Mourinho was still the coach in 2004 uh, um, at Schalke. So it's kind of, you know, they were going back to the site of their biggest triumph. And yeah, yeah there you go. So that group seems open but this group is also of the four that played yesterday clearly the lowest one uh you know with the least exciting least exciting teams i think every team in that group is happy that they're not in any of the others um but yeah let's go to i think group c and this is where uh the new champions league got me yesterday i you know i'm still used champions league 845 no, they're splitting it up and there's no rhyme and the reason to the splitting up. Seemingly there will be two games at uh, 7 Central European time and the others at 9. So completely new times. I'm happy about the 7 o'clock slot, honestly, because that uh, may or may not uh, give me a chance to watch some of these games. Uh, why may not? Well, that's exactly a time when I'm putting the key, when I am or my wife we are putting the kids to sleep, so you're kind of busy, but uh, maybe a second half is realistic in these cases. And for that, they actually had really good games. As you can see, I'm wearing my Barcelona uh, jersey. So Barcelona got the Champions League started with goal scoring and who else but Messi. Uh, I think it's a fitting start to the Champions League season. Messi converts a beautiful free kick. I mean, that one, I watched the three or four times. That one, I think no one could have saved. Maybe if there's an extraordinary toll and uh, with quick reactions, goal, goalkeeper. But that one was a thing of beauty. Uh, and you could see he wanted to pull it exactly where he put it. So, uh, absolute great goal. Um, of all the goals I've seen, probably the best goal of the evening. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's just a free kick, but this was a really, 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 really nice goal. Um, they played, of course, PSV Eindhoven, uh, who played in the unusual white, light blue shirt, uh, short shirts. I was actually wondering, maybe Eindhoven, if they would play with white shorts, they could also use the first choice kit in red and white, but I guess the contrast was better there. Yeah. Uh, also, of course, there's a little bit of uh, connections between Barca and Eindhoven. Um, Mark van Bommer, of course, is the coach of Eindhoven now, and he uh, was, of course, playing for Barca um, for quite a while. And then, yeah, I cannot really come through, although I really, really want. 
and then yeah, uh, for me still the biggest uh, um, Ronaldo, the great Ronaldo. I'm still gonna do it. The great Ronaldo uh, played for PSV and then moved to Barcelona. So there's another. I think Koku was a PSV guy. So there is. It's maybe not as apparent as the Ajax Barcelona connection, but there's also a PSV. Uh, Barcelona connection. There is a big Netherlands Catalonia connection, all going back to, of course, uh, Johan Cruyff. Once that happened, I think this changed the face of uh, first Catalan and Bar uh, Barcelona soccer, and um, by extension, then the Spanish national team. Once the coaches realized, uh, or the federation realized that maybe this is the uh, style we have to play and then Spain finally became the dominant team uh, in the late 2000s. So I think that that, that that is where the real switch came, but it's all down to Johan Cruyff. And I think, I still feel he's undervalued. Uh, I think many people say, uh, that's a whole different discussion. I actually planning a video ahead with uh, subscriber Yanis, uh, discussion about who I think are the best players. Uh, all time that I've seen and so on and I think this is worth the video. Uh, uh, Johan Cruyff is definitely up there uh, with his overall impact on, uh, soccer, on modern soccer. Never underestimate Johan Cruyff. Uh, he did not coach a lot, he played, he did not win actually that much as a player. I mean if you take the three Champions League away, uh, European Cups that he won with Ajax didn't win that much with Barcelona, but he was such an integral figure uh, of that team. Yeah. As I said, I think he's one of the true, true, true greats. So yeah, Barcelona then, yeah, Messi, I think, at the second, and Dembele scored also a really nice goal, and I'm a little bit surprised of Dembele, honestly. Uh, I think he, he switched last season from Dortmund, and he was kind of an afterthought, and now he I mean, he is in great shape, great form, great form. So yeah, you have Dembele uh, scoring a goal, and Messi, of course, goes two more, and this is a four-nothing victory. Uh, the only sour grape for Barcelona, of course, was the yellow red for uh, MTT, uh, which I find strange in many ways. Uh, first of all, if you are on a route. You, as a player of the team routing the other one, should by no ways get a red card. It just not. Just doesn't make any sense. Uh, I know this was a stupid foul of MTT and so on, so it was not really out of nervousness, but uh, in a route you don't get a yellow and red or, or a red card. I'm sorry. Um, more discipline. There was no, there's no need for that, honestly. Uh, in a tight game, I excuse a lot, but in, in, in a route, it was three nothing at that point. And yeah, Barcelona still made the four nothing because you have Messi. Um, and it was an interesting thought, maybe to have a more level play. I mean, if you have a superstar team like Barcelona playing an out uh, team that's clearly fear in PSV. And honestly, it hurts me to say because when I started, started watching soccer, um, it still until the mid 2000s, PSV was a team that was really good. They almost made it to the Champions League final uh, um, in 2005. Um, they were a goal away of eliminating Milan. So you know, it's not that uh, and this is uh, so long ago. I think this is what hurts me that. Um, the teams in the big leagues are really separating themselves so much from uh, teams of second level leagues. And they, uh, hurt, it honestly hurts me a little bit. Because uh, I think the time that we will see a Porto winning the Champions League, that's clearly over. It was already when Porto won it, a huge, huge, huge surprise playing against Monaco of all teams. So yeah, there you go. Um, so Barcelona sits pretty at the top of the group. Um, 
which also now for some reason when I think think about the Messi goal, the new Champions League ball is very interesting. Uh, that it's mostly blue with the white stars, which I think is a nice look. But uh, it, you don't see it in play. But when you uh, watch the replays, you can really see this is a different color ball. Nice touch. Nice touch. The other uh, um, game, of course, was one of the two big clashes, although not that big as, as recent form, which was Inter against Tottenham. And it was a clash between two teams that, as of late, are not, not in any good form. Um, Inter, especially Tottenham, also um, didn't look that good. I mean, losing to Watford and completely out of sorts against Liverpool. We come to Liverpool uh, in a bit, uh, and in the end, yeah, I think even the Manchester United, uh, when they won three nothing at Manchester United, it was kind of more a lucky win because they got the early go uh, the goal early in the second half. That's what I wanted to say, and uh, then Manchester United folded. I don't and. They didn't look especially great there either. So yeah, Tottenham is a little bit, I think, a team on, on, on the edge. I think they probably need a few opponents where they can up their confidence again. Because yesterday it also didn't go well. Um, Tottenham was the better team, over most of it. And Inter didn't show really a lot. Um, Tottenham scored. The first goal in the 53rd was well, again a scrappy goal by Eriksen. Uh, where a lot was going wrong. I think there were moves before where Tottenham had clearer chances of converting. And yeah, it looked like a Tottenham victory from them. And then Icardi scores a great goal. Probably second, if not a Dembele. You know, it was a great goal by Icardi. Taking the ball, uh, volley at the edge of the box and hammering it into the corner. I think it was in the 87th, so they got the, the equalizer. And Icardi didn't play this weekend, uh, the, the previous weekend. So, yeah, they probably wanted to save him for exactly this game. So, uh, Icardi equalizes, and if I believe the commentator, it came out of nowhere. Tottenham look entirely in control. Tottenham was the better team. Uh, Inter gets the equalizing goal. Of course, stadium goes crazy. And then out of the blue again, corner and added time, and Inter scores the winner. That must hurt for Tottenham big time. Not in the context of the Champions League, because you know, if you lose this, um, it's the away game and you still have the home game against Inter. Uh, if you win 1-0, you have the tie break over Inter. So, you know, there are, it's not all is lost. But uh, it must hurt from a psychological point of view. This team you dominated. Uh, Inter made two goals out of nowhere. And yeah, cannot look good. Um, again, uh, despite it being Inter, the Italophile in me is a little bit happy because I want Italian teams to do well in European competition. I want Italy to assert itself uh, safely among the top three leagues again maybe even pushing for a top spot um, I you know the Milan fan admits it but doesn't it need to be me Inter who is doing all that heavy lifting maybe not yeah but you know I think Tottenham fans will not be happy about that result um, quick note on the Tottenham shirt or uh, kit as I said, the shirt looks nice, especially if they were navy pants, but if they were white pants, as I did yesterday, it looks odd. It likes, looks like you have a safety ring around your belt or whatever. It looks weird, absolutely looks weird. And now, speaking of Italian teams, and I am really keeping the best game for last, uh, we go now to Napoli against Germina Svesta, or the other way around. Um, again, I'm gonna say, when I talk about that group, last one that we're talking now, um, I think it's group B. Could be group C. Group C, I think. It's group C. Sorry about the letter C. I have not really prepared well for uh, if I had the chair, the chair, if I had the time and energy to do the Champions League jersey review, I would be much better with my letters. But hey, I gotta have 
for. I'm already rem remembering who is playing in which group. I know who is group A. Uh, I think this is group C. Whatever. Um, I'm not gonna say much about the Napoli jersey now. I'm gonna leave this for the review. Um, it's gonna be skating a little bit. But yeah, Cevenas Vesta made a 0 0 draw against Napoli uh, by defending, 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 and Napoli just not being able to create really good chances. Yes. There was a shot that touched or kissed more or less the bar, but there were really not much. I mean, yes, they had possession, they had control, they probably should have won it, they didn't, and I think that already puts Napoli in a really tough spot in this really, 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 really tough group because now they need to get a result from one of the big teams in the in, in, in the group. I think in this group, uh, you only have a chance if you make six points against Cervenas Vesta. And again, I know Cervenas Vesta fans kind of went a little bit all over me. Uh, on my video when they beat Salzburg, I, st I did not mean anything like that on the disc. I just, I believe, I deeply believe that Cervenas Vesta is not as good as a team as any team that Salzburg beat in the, Europe, in, in the Europa League. Uh, this is nothing against Cervenas Vesta because I actually have uh, that would be my one of my more favorite teams in Eastern Europe, and that's mainly due to the, the, them winning the European Cup in '91. I saw that one. That was kind of the second Champions League final that I really saw European Cup final back then. Um, the final was boring, but I know that uh, everyone was talking about their semi-final against. Uh, Bayern Munich, where Roy Brozhinecki was in amazing form, and that team was a really, really great team. So, you know, there's no ill will towards me, it's just my neutral assessment. Really, in that case. Because I don't like Sal Salzburg if I If I would have to pick between Salzburg and Cervantes and stuff, uh, the only, without any League points at play, I think I would pick Germanus Vesta any time of the day uh, over Salzburg. But being from Austrian, I, you know, I'm probably, that makes me neutral here. Yeah. Okay, so it was a 0 0, and that meant that the meeting at Anfield between uh, Liverpool and PSG was more or less already a first step at the top qualifying spot. I gotta be honest, that's how it feels to me. And boy, did Liverpool look good, and boy, did they make it hard. Uh, similar to the Tottenham game, Liverpool completely dominated PSG. Uh, especially then in the second half, or, or, or in the first one. When they were up 2 nothing, it was a well deserved lead. Uh, and with that, uh, there are no doubts about it. Liverpool completely dominated Paris Saint Germain. Uh, which in itself is already a good indication of the form that Liverpool is in. The question for Liverpool, of course, will they be able to sustain it for a full season? But I think they invested well, they have a great team. Um, they should at least challenge for the Premier League title. I think for Liverpool, it's a boom or bust uh, season in a way. They have the chance to win the Premier League and or the Champions League, one of those two. I think they're going all in on one of those two titles. And they honestly have the squad to do it. Uh, maybe a little bit more. I think they even have stability. The one thing that I have been lacking, at least in the last two games, is that they convert their chances. So they were up to nothing. Meunier uh, puts one back for PSG. Um, yep, yeah, 2 1 at halftime. Liverpool keeps on going for the third goal. They don't make the third goal. It is. Uh, you need to put the opponent away. That, that is the quality that, that's missing, and maybe that's something that has been plaguing club teams for a while. That you know, for all the great uh, style that they have, they sometimes just cannot finish off an opponent, especially if it's a perceived uh, bigger opponent. And there is undoubtedly a lot of class on this PSG team. So um, maybe Tuchel. It's another the, a duel between form, the former Dortmund coaches, the 
I find this also that there that was a German young the young German power coaches uh, matching up uh, definitely interesting so yeah uh, so it's 2-1, Liverpool is going for the 3-1, they cannot make it, and of course what happens, you get the 2-2. And I think it was Salah losing the ball in midfield, and then Neymar and Kylian and Mbappé running like right next to each other. But yeah, you have here the two most uh, expensive players running on goal. There was only one way that, that, that this is going, uh, Mbappé making the goal after Neymar assist. Um, and it looked like 2 2. Fortunately, Liverpool got their winner, and I think it was deserved. Um, the last two Liverpool games, I think the, they got the wins that they deserve. No doubt about it, but it was way harder than it needed to be. You should have put Tottenham away easily, you should have put PSG. By, by mid second half, PSG should have been dead. Uh, no doubt in my mind about it. So yeah, um, that group looks Liverpool to take, uh, but you know it's not. I think if you Liverpool and PSG, it's more important to get through to the second round. We already saw when you saw the draws for the uh, round of 16 in the Champions League of late. Uh, it was never that you had a big advantage, at least when you. Possible opponents that you were that you won the group because uh, the teams that finished second were usually also uh, very often big names, and then uh, with not with teams from the same league not allowed to play each other, uh, often the choices were quite limited. So you almost got almost always got a tough opponent. And so therefore, I think it's most important to make it out of the group stage. Yes, it is nice to play a second leg at home; that is still an advantage. But I think overall. Uh, it's not too much difference. If you're gonna win the Champions League, you anyway, it counts in spring. And that's the one thing that uh, many people are often discounting. I think the last team that won it, where I already saw in the group stage, that yeah, this is gonna be the team that wins it all. Uh, now, nah, maybe two. Uh, the Barcelona teams and I know the 2003 Milan, they actually were petering out a little bit but still managed to win it. Um, other than that, it was always that the team that actually won it did not uh, got hot uh, in the uh, knockout stage. And that's something to watch, I think, uh, this year as well. So, um, while I'm happy for Liverpool to get the big win over PSG, I think it was a great game. Um, you know, don't be too excited about it. Not gonna talk about the PSG jerseys. I'm gonna leave this for my review, which probably will post on Friday or Saturday. Let me know what you thought about the games, uh, which games you watched. As I said, I only watched highlights, but I managed six games this morning. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more uh, jersey reviews, my opinion on things, and yeah. I will talk to you soon. Bye.